Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, day of trading. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Welcome aboard. Uh, only thing we ask is if you could take one second and hit the like button, uh, share, subscribe, and we will take care of the rest. Hopefully, again, to continue uh, to give you an unbiased opinion uh, for the next trading day. Because again, beyond that, it's very, very tough to play uh, Miss Cleo looking at the crystal ball and trying to figure out where stocks are going to close three months from now. We're worried about tomorrow. So let's talk about it. So last week, uh, obviously, destruction of equity prices. I don't think anybody uh, can d disagree with that. The NASDAQ fell about five and a half percent. We talked about uh, on the video throughout the whole week, the importance level uh, of the 50-day moving average, losing uh, the 435 level. And again, you can see how disgusting this moved down if you refused to acknowledge those levels or just turned around and just had no idea those levels were so important. So we talked about it. what was done, what was done, it's done in the past. The question was, what was going to happen today? Uh, if you watch the end of the weekend video, we talked about uh, a potential of some sort of dead cat bounce this week. So I'm not really surprised when you look at the scoreboard today and you see the NASDAQ up 1%, uh, S&P uh, snapping a six-day losing streak up eight-tenths of a percent today, and the Dow that you know, really got hit uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks up six-tenths of a percent. So it's not really, you know, it's not really surprising because, again, even the worst markets in the world will have updates, right? You go back to 2022 when we were 85 90% of the time below the 50-day moving average, it had days that the NASDAQ rallied, that the Dow rallied, that the S&P rallied. So that's not really the surprise. The surprise came today that we didn't flush out first. Because usually what you want to see is, especially after 5.5% worth of downside action last week, what the bulls really wanted to see was a big, aggressive, egregious 2 2.5% gap down pre-market let everybody throw away their shares, reverse kind of by mid-morning, and start this reverse reversal back to the upside. That didn't happen. And because that didn't happen, it, it led to a very unenthusiastic, I'm going to use that word a couple of times uh, today, it, it, it led to a very unenthusiastic bounce. And if you look at the technical damage, kind of, you know, just uh, bear with me for a second. If you look at the reversal candle here, the reversal candle here on April the 4th was the CPI reversal number. The CPI reversal number took down about two weeks worth of buying. And the next couple of days, the market did absolutely nothing, right? Inside day, inside day, inside day, they attempted to break out and they just completely imploded below back the 50-day moving average. That's kind of where we are today, right? Uh, we have this massive move down and we had an inside day. Didn't take out the, the highs of Friday's channel, didn't take out the lows of Friday's channel. It was just kind of in the middle of its way. And if you look at individual stocks, they're going to mirror exactly uh, what you know the inside day looks like. So, right. So for example, Microsoft. You know, Microsoft went from 413 all the way down to 397, putting an inside day. Meta in the last few days, you know, has gone from 518 all the way down to 473. Again, inside day. Uh, Apple, same thing, right? Apple, same thing. You know, Apple got absolutely destroyed. It actually gapped up uh, into that five day, got rejected as well, and finished inside the channel. So if you look at a lot of names, you're going to see exactly the same thing. Now, it, before you know, before you turn around, and and I see new traders commonly make this mistake all the time. Before you turn around and say, "Well, that was the bottom," right? That was the bottom. You know, the sellers got tired. Right, Dan, you say this all the time. Sellers get tired. They're not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, all right, this is it. This is the exhaustion move. Now we're going to re reverse back up. Before you say that, keep this in mind. Sellers get tired after a two, three, four week, three, four, five, six month 
decline. They don't get tired after five, six days. It's like the opposite of a rabid bull market, right? If a stock market broke out or your favorite stock broke out and went up five days in a row from the breakout level, okay? And on the sixth day, it was down a dollar, a dollar and a half. Would you turn around and say, that's the top? Of course not, right? It's just a res day. Well, why is the downside any different, right? We went down six days in a row, confirmed the downside of the 50-day moving average. And on the seventh day, right, we had an inside day. We had an update. We had an inside day, didn't, didn't do anything, didn't turn the needle, didn't move the needle, didn't get anybody excited. If you looked at the quote-unquote rally today, it was one of the weakest, most Again, unenthusiastic rallies that I can remember in a dead cat bounced in a very, very long time. Even a, a pivot that we had in the afternoon, just to give you an idea, right? We had a pivot here, 497. Maybe I actually even tweeted this out. 497 to give a pop, right? So it gave a pop, but that pop was so heavy and it traded up to that 801 level, you know, getting three, four dollar pop really quickly. And they sold it off very, very instantly. So it really shows you how much effort you really needed for the market to move anything today, right? Anything. And again, before you turn around and say, well, and the video was strong today, it was up 33. Guys, the video has gone from 907 to 756 in four sessions. Do you really think up 33 points is a strong day? And again, inside day here, didn't, you know, didn't confirm the highs, didn't confirm the lows. And if you look at history, and that's the whole point of understanding data, understanding how things kind of play out over and over again. If you look at NVIDIA, I'm going to use NVIDIA as um, a, just a proxy here. Let's look at NVIDIA, you know, let's look at NVIDIA on this reversal candle on April the 4th. That was the whole CPI number, right? So what happened? April 4th, it reversed, took down a whole bunch of levels, and the next couple of days went sideways, right? Went two, three days sideways, and finally lost that channel again, gave another $20 bar before really losing this big move on the downside as well. That's exactly what it looks like, at least on the surface today. Again, and, I'm, and again, once again, I'm just using NVIDIA as an example. You can, you can use this example for anything. You can use this example for the Qs, right? Same thing for the Qs. You know, Qs, engulfing candle, went sideways, went lower. Engulfing candle, now it's going sideways. So it, it's, it's conceivable you might get another one, maybe two days worth of sideways action. But guys, it's so worth it, okay? If for all you guys who think that every single day you have to trade and you have to go nuts and you have to do this and you have to do that because somebody on social media is telling you how great an opportunity is. All of us have been trading for a very long time. We know what distribution is. We know the, the, the exact meaning of distribution. Distribution means that the market is just resting to, to proceed back into that direction. It doesn't mean that this is it. That was the bottom. It just means that, hey, we have to rest. The same way stocks would rest breaking out in a five, six day channel, stocks have to rest after breaking down in a five, six day channel until we start kind of getting rid of earnings season. Again, and the earnings season just started. Uh, they started last week with banks. They started with the technology sector uh, with Netflix uh, last week, which uh, bombed out. Tomorrow you have Tesla. Right tomorrow you have Tesla and sticking with the unenthusiastic theme. Tomorrow probably stands as the one of the most unenthusiastic quarters that are people are waiting to hear. Uh, again, over the weekend you heard now price cuts not just in Europe, not just the United States, but like everywhere, man. They're just literally price cutting right before earnings. Uh, it's sitting down. In this latest breakdown channel below this 160 and a half level, there's literally no optimism. Okay, does that mean the stock comes out with bad earnings and tanks? Yeah, very possible. But we've seen it all uh, so many times that when a company has this horrific move down, and once they lost the 50 day uh, way back in December of 2023, is it possible that this move on the way down is already built into the into the price? It's not like anything is possible. Okay, it, there's no point for us to have a debate. There's no point for you to waste moments of your life, minutes and hours of your life debating with somebody on social media what what, what you think is going to happen on Tesla's earnings. The damn thing is going to go up or down. That's it. This the, this horrific quarter that everybody thinks uh, is going to happen, it's either going to happen until it continue going lower or they're going to get so tired with all this selling in the last several months, they're going to try to squeeze the stock. It's all on the table. That's what earnings are the most, you know, they're the most unpredictable ways to try to navigate the financial markets. Because even if you have 
the earnings in your hand, you still don't know how the stock uh, is going to react. Uh, Wednesday, you have Meta. Uh, we saw some pretty big put buying coming in on Meta. Thursday, we saw some, we have Microsoft, Intel, Google. Google honestly is holding up the best out of all these technology stocks. Doesn't mean it's going to hold up on earnings. But the point is, I, I think the bulls need to prove to investors that, you know what, we're going to get through earnings. And if the earnings are not bad or the earnings are actually quite good, maybe the market does resume. Maybe the market in the next couple of weeks reclaims back the 50-day moving average. But for face value, for par going into tomorrow, it's very conceivable that we have a very slow day today, a very slow day tomorrow. It's very, very conceivable. Because again, when you have a big move down, 5.5% down, especially on the NASDAQ, the market needs to digest that information. And now, if you're an experienced trader, you get that. And I, I've been saying this for years, when the market rests, you rest, right? So for me today, I, I had a very unfulfilling, day, a very unfulfilling day today. And that's okay, right? Last week was amazing, absolutely amazing. We were taking down ranges. Today, it was so uninventful, right, that I took a rejection on Tesla, went down like a dollar and change. We actually had a couple of rejections on Tesla. The first one went down a dollar and change. The second one went down about three. So I made some money on Tesla. I, I tried to, I, I it was just, I tried to short Meta. It was literally no liquidity. I lost some money in, in Meta. So after that, I was like, eh, who cares, right? It's, it's an irrelevant day. Whether you're up a, up a little bit, down a little bit, it's an irrelevant day when you see no value. So I can see a scenario that tomorrow kind of plays out like today. So here's the key. You got to be mature enough to understand this, okay? Stocks just don't go straight up. Stocks don't go to straight down. They need to rest. They need to um, recycle buyers and sellers. They need to go through a little bit of distribution. Distribution usually lasts for a couple of days, especially after a big move one way or another. So it's going to be a scenario tomorrow that, hey, if we can catch something coming out of a range, surprisingly, that'd be great. If the market, uh, uh, if the market starts to resume its selling from last week, hey, guess what? That's great too because that's where the momentum is. But again, if this is one of those scenarios that we need to kind of be a little bit more passive than aggressive uh, for the next couple of days, I'm with that as well. Again, this is not a race. This is not you know a, a popularity contest. You don't need to act smart on social media. It's your hard-earned money. It's your, you know, it's your dime. It's your dance floor. You can do whatever you want. But the point is, why would you go into a day knowing there's a potential for another distribution cycle and start burning your mental equity when you can just wait it out? Maybe take a couple of scalps here and there, wait it out, and eventually one of these days the channels are going to resume uh, in that direction. There are some, air, you know, there are some groups that are actually pretty strong. One of the groups that's pretty strong are the airlines. Uh, look at, you know, look at, look at, yeah, you know, DAL. DAL is very, very close uh, to breaking out above the April highs. JetBlue, you know, they come out with earnings tomorrow uh, pre-market. Look at this channel. This looks really, really good as well. Uh, look at, uh, look at AMR. What was it? AMR? No, what was it? AMR. AMR. What was the other one? Um, just think about American Airlines. It wasn't American Airlines. But go through, go through, go through the airlines. You'll see. Uh, I think even Boeing reports uh, tomorrow as well. Not the same, obviously not the same chart. Uh, but the point is there are definitely some groups that are standing out. Um, you have some uh, oil names that are still running. x is a perfect example of that. So you have those second and third tier uh, groups that, at least for me, I have zero interest in. I, I trade technology. Um, I couldn't care less what you know oils are doing or airlines are doing but if this is your thing you you can definitely find something there's definitely levels of interest in other areas of the market than technology but if you are a technology trader all you got to do is just wait it out we're, we're going to resume either tomorrow or the next day the last thing you want to do is burn your mental equity for the next 24 hours and by the time you get a resumption whether it's wednesday or thursday and you're getting a premium hand you're so burnt out because you churn yourself knowing there's a distribution channel and you still did it, that you're sitting there and you're trading a premium day just the same way you'd be trading it during a, during a churning event. So it's very, very important, guys. I don't care if you're trading for you know 20 weeks, 20 days, or 20 years. You have to be disciplined enough to trade the premium hand. So if you know there's any possibilities of a potential second day rest of the market, you have to, you, you deserve it, right? You deserve, and you, you, I think you owe it to your account 
to put yourself in a situation that you wait with the market. The market rests, you rest as well. So tomorrow, we got Tesla earnings coming up. Uh, obviously, again, very, very little enthusiasm going into the quarter. Let's see how the market reacts. Is, is it possible it's baked in and the market reverses Tesla on earnings? Absolutely. Is it possible they just say some really, really horrific stuff and Tesla continues to move down? Well, that's on the table as well. We shall see, said the blind man. We shall see. Guys, God bless everybody. I will see you tomorrow and have a great, great trading day.